Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be building this image slider. You can see we get this really nice kind of scaling effect and it snaps into place uh, when you stop scrolling. So you can never have like multiple images on the page. It's a really nice snapping effect, all done with vanilla JavaScript. And you can see that image gets that nice scaling functionality as well when we, um, when we uh, navigate through our slider. Um, this also works great on mobile devices where we're going to also be looking at implementing um, touch events just to make this look more smooth already. You can see when you swipe up, you get that nice subtle um, animation. And yeah, we get this. We also go into implement this nice sort of glass morphism, futuristic um, div down the bottom here as well, which changes when we navigate through our projects. Okay, so let's go straight into it. Thanks. Okay, guys, so to get started with this project, you can see we just got the index.html file, a style.css file, and an app.js file. Um, I also have this images folder here, and I've got five AVIF images I've sourced from unsplash.com. Um, I'm just going, going for the um, sci-fi kind of feel for this for this project. Um, so yeah, just get those from Unsplash or any images, images you want to use for this project. So let's just jump into our index.html now. And let's just emit some boilerplate code. Um, going to come in the head section, and we'll just link to our style.css. And then we'll just do a script source um, to the app.js file um, at the bottom of the body here. And then I'm actually just going to get, um, we're going to use this font from Google Fonts. So um, it's a kind of a futuristic font called Orbitron. So let's just grab that. I'm going for um, just this regular 400 version here. So if I copy the link tag, you can download this, but we'll just use a CDN for now. So I'm going to come above our CSS file. We'll paste those link tags in to get that Orbitron font loaded. And then I'm also just going to put this in our global settings in our CSS. Did a star for the global settings and then we can just say, copy this font family here and paste that into our global settings. And then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So let's now come back to our index.html file. And I'm going to open this with live server as well, just so we can see our changes as we go. Now in our body here, the first thing we want to do here is just create a div of a class of content slider double underscore container. This is going to actually contain our slider. Um, so we'll do that now. We'll say dot content double underscore slider. And in here, we're just going to have five different projects. Okay, so we have a div of a class of project here. And then in this inside this div, we'll say image, and we'll just link to our first image, like so. And I'm going to copy this project div with the image down for um, four more times. We'll have five projects in total. And then we'll just change these images to so two, three, four, and five. And these just should just coincide with what you've got here in your images folder. Um, so that's it for our content slider. Um, I just want to come above, or yeah, we'll go below this actually. So come below the content slider, remain within the content slider container, and we're just going to have a div of a class of glass, double underscore div. And then in here, we'll have glass, actually, I don't think we need that. We'll leave that out. We'll just say um, h2, we'll give this a class of project name, like so. And we can just have some boilerplate in there for now. We'll just say project. And then also we'll have for P uh, for a paragraph and we'll just put some lorem text in there for now. This would be like kind of your project um, description, whatever. Okay, so that's it for that part. The final thing we need to do in our HTML is we'll just say, we'll have a main element here. And this is going to be used just to get the scroll or create our um, scroll effect. Okay, so we can just say main and then we'll, in this main we'll have a div of a class of container. Okay, so now let's move to our style.css and let's just apply some global settings first. So we're just going to remove these default paddings and margins you can see here. Um, so we just say, come up here, we'll just say margin zero, padding zero, and box size in border box. And then we'll also just say scroll behavior, smooth. And we're setting this to smooth because we're going to be using JavaScript to snap these images into place. Um, depending on what image is most in the viewport. 
and we don't want it to just like jump straight to it. We want it to be like a nice smooth animation, and that's why we're setting this uh, scroll behavior to smooth because we're going to be um, performing this animation based on the scroll position. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do here is just um, specify the font color, and here we're going to use a green yellow. Okay, it's a nice luminous font color. Um, yeah, you should uh, you'll see that shortly. So it looks really kind of futuristic and cool, I think. Um, so now we'll come under here, we'll set the font size to be one rim. And then we'll just do a text transform of uppercase just to make sure every letter is capitalized. And then we'll set the over scroll behavior as well to none. So just so I can show you, we get this kind of bounce effect occurring now when we reach the top of the screen and this over scroll behavior will stop that. So if you say none, we no longer get that bounce. Okay, it just stops direct and that makes this um, effect look better, um, especially on mobile devices. Now I kind of need this, I just want to target our HTML next and we're just going to give this a width of 100% and a height of 100% to fill the viewport horizontally and vertically. And then I'm going to target the main element and here we're going to position this fixed, okay? And then we want to specify the top to be zero, left to be zero, so a width of 100%, so a height of 100% as well. Okay, and then we'll also just say overflow Y. Okay, because we want to be able to scroll this on the Y axis only. So we just say overflow Y, scroll. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do here um, is we're just going to say, um, we want to target our actual container. So we'll just say dot container. And here we'll give this a position of absolute. Absolute like so. And then we'll just say top um, zero, left zero, width of 100%. And in this case, I don't want to give it a height because we're going to be adjusting the height of this container. Remember, this is within the main element. We're going to be adjusting the size of this or the height with JavaScript, depending on the amount of projects that we've loaded onto the HTML, which in this case, we've got five projects here. Okay, so now you can see that's okay. There's our projects. Um, next one I want to do, let's just grab our um, content slider container next. So let me just copy that from here this content slider container. And here I'm going to position this also to be fixed. Okay, and then we can say top zero, left zero, width of 100%. And we'll give it a height of 100% to fill the viewport as well. And then the next thing I want to do here is just grab our content slider next. So let's copy this. And then here, we're just going to say position absolute. Again, top zero, left zero, give it a height of 100%. Um, and then we're just going to say display flex as well. And that will just move all the images next to each other as opposed to in a column fashion. And then we also just want to say here, um, will change, transform. And what this will do, this will just optimize the browser to perform the um, JavaScript transformations that we're going to be applying. Um, and it will just, yeah, it will, it will allow, it will tell the browser that we're going to be making these transformations and then the browser can perform the relevant optimizations to handle that. Um, and then we can just say dot project. Let's target our project next, each of our project elements. And for these, we're just going to say position of relative. We're going to give these each a width of 100 viewport widths. So to take up 100% of your viewport only. And then we give these a height of 100% to fill the parent, um, the content slider container. And then we'll just say overflow hidden because we're going to be scaling the images in each of our projects and we don't want them to be spilled over into the, uh, into the next project element. Okay, so now on that we'll target our project images. And here we can just say position absolute, again top zero, left zero width of 100% like so. And then we'll also give these a height of 100%. Now this will stretch them out. Um, so what we need to do here is just specify the object fit. And we're going to specify that to cover. Okay, and that will um, preserve the aspect ratio for each of our images. 
And then we can also sense that as well. So we say object position, center, just to make sure they're always centered. And then we're also going to be applying scaling transformations on these. So we can just say again, we'll change transform to optimize the browser to perform those scaling animations on our scroll. Okay, so now underneath this, next thing I want to do is just grab our glass div. So say glass double underscore div. And here we'll position this absolute uh, bottom of zero. Oh no, we do, we'll do a two rem, give it a bit of white space. We'll do the right of two rem as well. And then we'll say, we'll give this a width of 200 pixels. And then we'll also just say, we we'll give this an aspect ratio of one to one to make it a square. You'll see that in a second. And then we'll do the background color here. So there's a background color of white. And then we want to make this see-through. So I'll just bring this down like so. We'll go to about 185. And that'll do 184, whatever. And then what I want to do now is just do a backdrop filter. So we'll just say backdrop filter here of blur. Ten, oh, we'll do a 20 pixel blur, just give it that kind of glass effect. And then we just need to do a WebKit as well. So a WebKit um, backdrop filter. Again, this makes it work on mobile devices. Let's uh, say 20 pixels as well. And then what I want to do is we'll give you some padding of two rem, like so. And then also what I want to do actually, we just come underneath this. We'll say we'll target our P elements. I'll just say a font size of 0.5 rem, just make it smaller. And there you go, so that's looking better. And we'll just do a margin top for that as well. So margin top of 0.5 rem. Just give a bit of white space between that and the project title. And then what I want to do is just to make this look a bit more futuristic is I just want to apply a clip path here. So to do that, we can just say um, clip path, polygon, and this will just um, cut out some of this div, just make it want to cut out some of these corners. So to do that, we're going to start our polygon at 0% on the Y axis, on the X axis, sorry, and 20% on the Y axis. That would be 0% in the corner on the X axis and then 20% on the uh, Y axis here. So we'll start our polygon off from about here on the div. And then we want to move to 20% um, on the X axis and 0%, which will be about here is 20%. So we'll cut out this corner basically. Okay, and then next thing I want to do is we'll go to 100% on the x-axis and 0%. And you can see that's starting to take shape now. Um, and then we can say 100% on the x-axis and then 80% on the y-axis. And then we can say 80% on the x-axis, 100% on the y-axis. And then we'll finish this off by going to 0% on the x-axis and 100% on the y-axis. Now you can see we've got those corners cut out and it just gives it that kind of futuristic um, effect. Okay, so that's it for our glass div. Um, and I think we're pretty much there. I just wanna do one more thing. Um, we'll come underneath our P here and we're going to create a flash. It's because I want to create like a kind of flashy cursor thing here just to make it look like it's being like typed and just give it that more futuristic feel. So we say dot flash here. We're going, this is going to be a span element so we need to display it with inline block. And then also we want to give this a width of eight pixels. So let's just put this in here for now. We can say project, we'll come to our project title. We can just do a span, give us a class of flash. Okay, and then we give this a height of 12 pixels. Give it a background color of green, yellow. And then you can see that's appeared there now. And then we can then say, um, I'll give this a margin left, 0.5 rem. I think here we might have a little, let's just remove that gap. Okay, and then what I want to do is we're just going to add an animation here. So animation, and we'll just say flash, um, 0.5 seconds, infinite, and linear as well. Now let's create that flash animation. So we can say at keyframes, then we'll say flash, and then we can say 40% 
and we'll just say opacity of zero and then 100% um, opacity of one. And now you can see we get that flash, that's looking good. Okay, so that's it for HTML and CSS. Now we can jump into the JavaScript. Um, so let's do that now. Now the first thing I want to do here is I just want to actually assess if the user is using a mobile device or a desktop device. Okay, so what we can do, I found this um, really good Stack Overflow answer here, um, which I'll link to. I'll also paste this bit of code as well. So what we're doing here with this code, I'll just change that to let. We're basically saying we're setting a variable called is mobile to false. So initiate it as false. And then what we're doing is we're looking in this bit of code here is using regex here. So these are all mobile regex strings. And it's basically checking if our navigator.user agent contains these regex strings. And if it does, then it sets the is mobile to true. Okay, otherwise we just leave it as false. Okay, so um, that's what that, that function's doing. Um, so let's um, come back to here now. Or just to show you that navigator.user agent, you'll see if we come to our console, you can type in navigator.user agent, and then it just gives you, um, well, it tells you the details of the uh, machine you're using. You can see I'm using the Intel Mac uh, here to, to well, create this um, program. Okay, so now we've got that, let's get some selectors going. So first we'll target our main, we'll just say selector main, like so. Then we wanna get our scroll container. Take the uh, scroll double underscore container. Um, then the next thing we want to do is get our content slider. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is get our actual projects. So we can say projects, and I want to put this into an array. We'll use the spread operator here so we can spread out the um, actual elements. And we'll just say dot query selector all, get each project. So let's just console.log that to make sure. Dun, dun, dun. Got an error there, looks like. Projects is not defined. Okay, yep, so there's our array of our project divs. That's looking good. And then we want to get the uh, projects total. So we'll say let projects uh, total. That's going to equal projects.length. And we're going to be using this to set the height of our scroll container. We can set that as const actually. Okay, and then just two more things. And we're just going to say const project name equals um, document dot query selector and we'll just say dot project double underscore name and then I just want to copy an array over here and these are just project names okay so I've just gone for some generic project names here again use whatever names of the projects you're using but here I've just got project one project two project three um, and so on in this array Okay, now what I want to do now is I just want to say scroll container. So under scroll container is this um, uh, div here. So just yeah, class of container. Yeah, scroll container. Yeah, and let's just be container actually. Just container. So make sure that's set to just container. And then what we're going to do is set the style of this. So we we'll say dot style. Uh, style dot height. That's going to equal a template literal here. And we just want to take the projects total, which will in this case be five. So that's the length of the amount of projects. And I just want to times that by 100%, like so. Okay, so why can't you find that scroll container? Because document, oh, okay, so I need to put the dot on there. Okay, so now what we've done, we've set the height of our scroll container. So if we come to our elements, you'll see here, our container here, it's been set to 500%. So that's five times the viewport height, okay? Um, and we're just setting that just to make this scroll effect work. This, we need to make sure it's um, like the exact height for our, to make this, um, to make sure that, you know, it, it, it's in proportion to our uh, project's um, amount. 
Okay, so next thing I want to do under here, I just want to set a variable called rounded. And this is what we're going to use to implement this snap functionality later. Um, so we'll say rounded. And we'll set it to zero for the, when we start. And then, um, so let's just try and get this scroll functionality working for now. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to look at our main element. We're going to say add event listener to this main. We want to list out for a scroll event. And we'll do this callback function. And in here, um, we just want to get the scroll top. So if we just do main.scroll top, if we console.log that, you'll see this will just get the amount we're scrolling in pixels. We have to use a scroll top. So you can see we're scrolling there and that just gets the amount of pixels we've scrolled. Um, and then what I want to do here is just get create a variable. So say let's scroll equal and we'll say, do some parentheses here. We want to get the percentage of the amount we've scrolled. So we'll say main dot scroll top. And then we want to divide that by the window dot inner height. This is how you work out the percentage you've scrolled. And then we just times that by 100. That's the equation. So now if I console.log that scroll, and you can see when we get to the bottom, it's 400%. It's not the full 500% because we're factoring the um, additional, we have to take away the additional viewport height, which we can't scroll. So it's only 400%, okay? So that's what's, that's working fine. Um, so we've got the percentage now, and then what we can do with this is we can say content slider uh, dot style dot uh, transform equals, and we can say translate 3D here, and on the x-axis, we can just say minus um, scroll, and then we can say VW for viewport widths. Um, for the y-axis, we'll say zero. For the z-axis, we'll say zero. Okay, and then now you can see we're getting that nice cool scroll effect, and it will only go up to the end of our, um, our actual content. It won't go any further. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, the next thing I want to do here um, is let's get this snap functionality in place. So I'm going to come under here, we'll say function snap. And then for this function, what I want to do is I want to say main.scroll2. Um, and on the x on the y x on the x-axis, sorry, it takes in the x-axis first, we'll say zero. Um, on the y-axis, sorry, and then on the x-axis, we'll just say window dot in a height um, on the y-axis and then we'll just say sorry yeah this this first argument is the x-axis this second argument is the y-axis we're scrolling the y-axis on this main element um, and we'll say window in height and then we want to turn times that by the rounded variable um, divided by 100 okay and then we still need to specify this rounded variable actually so if I just come here what I want to do underneath this scroll we're going to say rounded and that's going to equal and then we're going to say here um, math dot round so the round very uh, the round function and we can say we want to take in that scroll variable and then we want to divide that by 100 and then we can uh, if we just console.log that for now Take this console.log out. Um, you'll see when we get whatever image is most on the screen, it will log that number, that rounded variable. So when we get to the third image, it goes to the second index. When the fourth image is more in the viewport, it goes to the well, it's index of three. And yeah, that's what it's doing. So it's getting the index of the image that we're closest to, or which takes up the most of the screen, and then it will snap that image into place. So that's what we're doing there. What we need to do with this rounded variable actually is just say, um, um, I think that's actually it for now. We'll, we'll keep it at that for now. Um, and then what we can do in this snap function is we'll just say, yeah, window.inheight times rounded. Yeah, I don't want to divide it by 100. Let's just keep that there for now. Um, and then in this um, 
scroll function what we want to do actually is i want to create a another uh, variable here this is going to be a timeout variable so say snap timeout okay and that's going to equal and we're going to use a set timeout here we want to run that snap function and we'll just set it to 50 milliseconds at first and then what we want to do in this scroll event listener let's take out these console logs is we just going every time we scroll we want to reset this timeout we don't want this to be applied we only want this timeout to be in operation once we've finished scrolling okay completely um, so to do that we'll just say underneath our, well, when we start this function we want to say clear timeout and then we just clear time um, the snap timeout and then we want to reset it um, so we can here just say uh, at the bottom here we'll say snap timeout and we'll just copy this equal set timeout like so Okay, and then I think so now. Yeah, we get that snap working. You can see when we get to the closest image, whichever whichever image is most in the in the viewport, it will then snap into position, like so. And that snaps working. Okay, so just to explain what's happening again, every time we scroll, we're resetting this timeout so it doesn't get triggered until fifty milliseconds later. So that means once we have finally finished scrolling and we no longer scroll anymore, this set timeout function will be able to run and it will snap that image into place. Now, what I want to do in this snap function, there's a few more things. I just want to adjust the uh, project name uh, down here. So to do that, we can just say uh, project name dot inner text equals, and we'll here just say project names, and then we'll just take that rounded variable, like so. And now you can see we get the project names changing when it snaps into place. Okay, um, and then also we've lost our cursor, so I just want to recreate that again. So we can just say let span equals document dot create element, and then we'll create a span, and then we'll just say span dot class name equals flash, and then we can just say um, project name dot append child and we'll append that span now you can see we get our flash reappear okay now let's um get that um scaling um functionality working now so we want it to scale or the images to scale when we uh, scroll just get that, that effect in place so to do that i'm just going to come down here and we will say um function animate and we're going to loop through each of our projects. So say let i equal zero, whilst i is less than project total, projects total, i plus plus. And here, what I want to do is just destructure the left attribute from each of our projects so we can see where they are on the screen. So say let left equals projects i, so the iteration that we're on, dot get bounding client rect. So that left will just be the left or the very left position of our project div. So it'd be in this case, it'd be zero for this for this one here, as that's on the very it's, it's relative to the left of the uh, viewport. Okay, and then what we want to do with that is we're just going to say projects i and want to grab the um, image within that uh, project element. So so we can say create select that image dot style dot transform, and here we can say a template literal rule. And then we want to use the scale function here. And in this scale, we always want it to be at least one. So we say one here. And then we want to add um, the math. So one is just the original size. When you scale it to 100%, that's the original size of, of the um, element. And then we want to just add, um, we'll say math.abs. And then we'll just take in that left. Okay, so it's not never a negative number, it's always positive. That's why I'm using that math.abs function. And let's see how it looks. And oh, we need to call this animate function over and over again. So let's do that. We'll come out this for loop and just say request animation frame animate. So now when we scroll, you can see we get this really intense scaling. So we need to dial that in a bit. So let's just do that now. And I'll just say I'll times this by 0 0.0005. And now you can see we get that nice subtle scaling when we um 
yeah, when we traverse the uh, the slider. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, so now this works great on desktop, but I do found I did find that it doesn't work too great on mobile devices because the mobile scroll is much more sensitive compared to desktop or mouse um, scrolling. So let's just um, make this work only on desktop. So I'm just going to say here, if not is mobile, and then we can just add this function into there. So this will only now work on desktop devices. Okay, um, now what I want to do is let's just create um, for the mobile devices now. Let's just finish this up for mobile devices. So I'm going to come under here and just say mobile. And we can say here, I first just want to do a function called mobile snap. Okay, and then what I want to do here is just say main.scroll2. So this is the snapping functionality for our mobile devices. And um, we'll just say here window.innerheight um, times rounded. Um, and yeah, we can just pretty much, here yeah, we can copy that. The only difference here is, let's just copy this. Now the only difference with our mobile snap is we just need to add um, this here. So we can just say um, in mobile snap, we'll come to the bottom and we just say content slider dot style um, dot transform equals, we'll say translate 3D again. We'll say template literal um, minus rounded times 100 VW, zero, and then zero. So let me just, let's just go into a mobile people here. Okay. And now what I want to do next is here, we'll just say, um, let um, touch start equal zero and let touch end equal zero. And we're just going to create, we're going to say if is mobile here. So this will only be applied if we are on a mobile device. Then we want to say, um, we want to set the content slider dot style and we want to set a transition animation timing if we're on a mobile device. And we're going to set that to 0.5 seconds. Okay, so you'll see now that as we are on a um, my old device here in the browser, I can see we get that transition of five seconds applied, okay, in the uh, console there. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to come under here, we'll say main.add event listener. I want to listen out for a touch start event. And then in here, we can just say, um, if I just console.log and E, and to get the um, touch position of the screen wire, or the, the touch position, the coordinates, we can say e dot touches zero in the, so it's like an array and we can just say screen y. So now if I console.log, yeah, we, we've done that already, sorry. Let's just, um, sh I'll just show you how that works. Come to the browser here, come to the console. And now we get that, that screen y position. Okay, and then what we can next do is I want to say um, basically touch start and that's going to equal and then we can just take that. That e touches the screen wire, so we're setting that variable there. And then I want to add a main dot uh, touch end event listener. So we we'll say main dot add event listener and we'll listen up for a touch end. And then here, if we just um, console.log, and for the touch end, it's, if we just console.log e for now, make sure you pass that event in like so. Here we want to target the, um, it's this changed touches here. So change touches um, zero, and then we want to just grab uh, the screen wire in here. 
So yeah, we'll just do that. So I'll just say e dot change touches zero um, and then dot screen wire. So if I just set that to um, touch end, and now. Okay, and then if I just do um, console dot log um, touch start minus touch end, so what this will do, oh, touch start minus touch end, sorry, not equals. If we swipe up, you'll see we get a positive number. If we swipe down, we get a negative number. Let's just um, delete that one. Yeah, so swipe. if we swipe down, we get a, a negative number. If we swipe up, we get that positive number. Okay, so we're going to use this just to uh, perform the animation. And then what we can say here is if um, um, yeah, we'll come underneath this. We can say um, let's swipe equal touch start um, minus touch end and then we can say if swipe is um, greater than or equal to 20 and we want to check that the rounded is also greater than zero then what we want to do is we'll say rounded minus minus else what we want to say is if swipe is less than or equal to minus 20 in this case and then we can say and rounded is less than projects uh, total minus one then we'll just say uh, rounded plus plus and then here after coming out of this we can just say mobile snap so now Now we're getting that functionality working on a mobile device. When we do the swipe, you can see we're getting that nice uh, transition. Okay, so I find this approach works the best on mobile devices as opposed to the desktop approach. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. We're nearly there. Let me just, um, I'll just see if this works on our, on our mobile device, on an actual mobile device. So if I just go to 500 here, I think what I actually do would like to do here, um, um, actually no, I think, I think that will do for now. Um, I might want to just change these around actually because I think they're swiping in the wrong direction. Yeah, because when we swipe up, I mean, we want to go down, don't we, on a mobile device? So let's just um, make sure that's correct here. So, what I can say is, um, yeah, uh, we'll say. We'll change these around. Um, okay, yeah, that's better. So if you change them around, so now let me just check that on my mobile device here. Yeah, that works better for me. That's the right way to do it. So yeah, make sure you change those around. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. So yeah, I think this is a really nice effect. It looks really cool, futuristic. Um, and what I would need to do as well, I've just realized, is if we um, we put this into a function, because I've just noticed when I've gone back to desktop mode, the effect isn't working. So let's just uh, make sure that does work. We'll put this into a function here. And then I can say,
Yeah. We can remove this. We can say, um, check is mobile. And I'll just say window dot add event listener. Um, I'll resize event. And we can say, check is mobile. Yeah, there you go. And there is our snap effect. So yeah, thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. Um, I'll post the uh, a link to the code in the um, description of the video if you need it. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a shout. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.